Hello everyone and welcome back to designing a website in Figma. In today's video we're going to be creating an illustration for one of our features on our features page. This is the final result, let's get into it. So here I have a screenshot, a product photo of the iPhone 14 Pro Max with the new dynamic island on the top right here and we are going to take this image and recreate it from scratch using simple shapes. We are not going to be creating something totally photorealistic but basically we're gonna try and create a something like a sophisticated icon or an illustration from scratch here in Figma. So what I'm gonna do I am going to select this image and then I'm going to reduce the opacity to about 50, right? So we want to make this really transparent and then I'm going to select this image and lock it. You can also lock the image by pressing Command Shift L or clicking this icon in the layers panel. How do we break this down? Uh, fortunately for us, this iPhone design is very simple. It is basically just a rectangle that is rounded with some silver lining, space gray lining more like, and then you get another rounded rectangle in the middle. That's the dynamic island. So let me press R on my keyboard and then create a rectangle. Um, this rectangle is going to be, I think, as wide as the screen, right? So as wide as this part of the, of the phone. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a stroke and this stroke is going to be aligned on the outside of this shape. So when I now add the line thickness, you can see that it's kind of being pushed outwards, right? Instead of inwards or being centered along the path. That's nice. Let me also remove the fill and let me now change the size so that it matches with the product photo, right? So we are looking at around 240 by 520, something like that. And then I'm gonna, of course, round the corners so that it reflects uh, the actual appearance of the iPhone. It appears to be at around 32. So let me just duplicate this and we have this black lining around the screen but then you also get this silver lining essentially so the way i'm gonna create this silver lining is basically duplicating this rectangle right so there's another one on top of our original one i'm going to change the stroke color to red just so that you can see the difference um, and then i'm going to move that below our original rectangle right and if i now increase with all these identical settings i now increase the width of the stroke you can see how we are basically applying a stroke on top of our stroke which is not really the case but um, it appears to be the case right so let me now change this to like light gray something like that and let's just duplicate this over here and let's look at it from uh, with a little bit of dark background, I think. So notice how with just two simple tweaks, just basically by two simple lines, this actually starts to resemble the original iPhone. Obviously, this is not going to be very complicated, right? So um, what I'm going to do, I think I'm going to, I'm going to use these, right? These two rectangles, let me move them over here. I'm going to select the bottom one, so that's rectangle 25, and then I'm gonna change the solid color to linear or actually radial let's experiment with a radial gradient i'm gonna move the origin over here and then change the opacity of this and let's just experiment with a few colors that we can add here kind of create a look that um, where the edge actually appears to be silver right so we're gonna want to experiment with uh, shades of gray essentially you're going to want to experiment with various darkness and position of these individual points. I think we are, I think I, I like this. I think I like this. So this, the, this is what our gradient now looks like. I think that's nice. We could also modify this. And yeah, if I now exit, you can see how it's very subtle, but by adding this gradient, it's starting to look like an actual metallic silver lining around the iPhone. So I'm gonna now create this dynamic island thing. That's gonna be also very simple. So basically just a black rectangle, right? That's gonna be 21 pixels tall around that area, 70 in the width. And then it's gonna be, of course, fully rounded, match the shape. 
And yeah, it's really starting to come together, right? As I said, it's, it's gonna be probably very simple. The difficult part is gonna be thinking of what we are actually going to put on the screen, right? So let me center this, yep. And then I'm going to probably just add a few buttons, right? So what I'm gonna do is, I think we have the volume control on the left and then the power button on the right. I have a slightly older model, so I think, I hope that's still, well, slightly that's relative. Um, but I hope that's still applicable with this one. So as you can see, I'm creating a rectangle with a little bit of rounding on the left corners, right? So top left and bottom left are gonna have two in terms of corner radius. Then let's do this. I'm gonna select this silver, this silver rectangle right below our, on this side, essentially, I'm gonna copy this and paste that on our new button except except well i actually yeah we're gonna have to do one small change and that's i'm i need to pass this uh, this gradient over onto our fill and not actually the stroke so let me just select this silver lining directly let me move that um command shift o and then it moves into the fill right so i can now copy this copy and then select this button turn off the stroke and paste that in as a fill, right? Uh, maybe there's an easier way. If you know about an easier way uh, that I, for what I just did, let me know in the comments below. I'll be happy to learn more. Yeah, this looks like a button or more like a circle wheel. Um, I'm going to do the same for this one and this one. I think I'm gonna reduce how light and, you know, just decrease the contrast because it really looks like it's somehow rounded and that's not intentional so let me just make sure that it's darker only on the edges essentially right so something like that i edited all of these three at once so i'm now, now going to move that over here i'm going to make sure it's positioned so that these edges are touching essentially and yeah i think we could do even instead of three pixels three points wide we could do two right i think that looks better, more compact. And then I'm just gonna take this, duplicate it, flip it, and I'm going to have to adjust the size so that it matches the power button, right? I'm gonna change the corner rounding to two, and then I'm gonna just move it over here so that we get the power button. And I think, I think actually that we're good to go, right? I think we could even add these little lines, but I just think that's too much detail and not really that necessary. Why don't we consider this done? Why don't I also select the rectangle 25 and maybe increase the width of the stroke by one? I think nine works best. Yeah, nine works best. So perfect, this is our iPhone. It's done, it's finished. I think we can remove the original image. I just have to search for that. Yeah, image 30, right click, unlock and remove. Now I'm going to group this and I'm going to rename this to iPhone mockup, right? It's not completely 100% realistic, but it's some somewhat realistic and I think that's just good enough for our purpose. So now we will be creating the image for this size. So let me just check what that size actually is. So that's 478 by 334. Let me duplicate this and let me create, let me actually create a fill around this. So command option G, create a frame around this, uh, command, uh, command option G, and then I'm gonna rename this frame to second feature visual, second feature visual, all right? And I'm gonna copy the attributes by pressing, by selecting the rectangle directly within this frame, uh, command option C, then selecting the frame, command V, and removing the rectangle from within this frame. I am also going to add another fill into this frame and it's gonna be fully white, fully visible, 100%, so that we get the identical color with this, right? Next thing I'm going to do is select this iPhone mockup and put that inside of our second feature visual. Uh, as you can see, we get uh, this, which we are going to turn off by checking clip content on the frame. And now you can kind of see how we get this phone mockup within the frame. We are going to have to think about the color of this because the silver lining is getting a bit lost. So we need to fix that. Let me think of a workaround. Why don't we, for example, add a shadow? Let's try that. So adding a shadow works, kind of works, but if we wanted to 
I think it would be better if we added another fill onto our frame. I'm gonna copy the color from below and then turn this into a radial gradient. So radial, and I'm gonna place it around right here. I'm also gonna make sure that one thing is in place and that's the actual iPhone background. So I'm gonna create a rectangle that's gonna be hidden behind the iPhone mockup and it's going to have rounded corners and then it's gonna be white so that we actually can differentiate right so it's not transparent so that's what we get now let's group these two so selecting the rectangle and the iphone mockup command g and let's actually start creating the content for our phone for our app right so let's just start typing and let me type in feature green and then let me turn this into a basically a headline for the screen i'm going to make this larger SF Pro Bold, right? Make it appear as if it's the part of the interface. And then uh, what we know about this feature, which is totally made up by the way, is that it has something to do with note taking or writing something down. So let me just create a couple of items directly on our screen to just mimic something like individual notes that we have taken. Right, I'm gonna also sample the color from, uh, from our background right here. And I'm going to make sure we have like three of those, maybe more. Maybe let's reduce the height, experiment a little bit, reduce the spacing, reduce the corners. I think making this a little bit darker could work. So why don't we go to HSL with this and reduce the lightness and the saturation as well. Reduce the lightness and the saturation. Right, so this is gonna be one part of our feature illustration. Remember, we are just basically creating something like a placeholder, something like simple accompanying image. Let me also change the color of this headline to this color that we get on this icon so that it kind of matches um, brand wise and let me also create a rectangle on top of this which will essentially just be another like part of the app let me add some shadow blur it play around with the settings i think this could work yep We also move this whole thing to the left so that we get more space for this and whatever this is. So why don't I copy this icon from right here by copying it from this feature horizontal card. I'm gonna click through all of this and take it from here and I'm gonna put that onto our new mockup, right? I'm gonna move it like this and I think we could reduce the size of this to 50%, 50%, right? Align that with this object, maybe borrow these rectangles, move them to the top. We are just essentially, what we are doing right now is just making stuff up, right? So we don't have any content, but we wanna create something that resembles these types of images essentially, right? So let me also duplicate this, reduce the height, duplicate, 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 command D, right? As if it's some kind of a text, some kind of a headline, something like that. And I think I'm gonna reduce the height of this by a few points, I like that. Maybe why don't we actually, why don't we resize this back to its original size because I think that's too small. We could do one thing, and that's detaching this, so command option B, and then just setting this group to center and center, and then reduce the size of this, right, essentially. Why don't we try that? Yep, yeah, I think that could work. I'm gonna center this. It's just me playing around with individual shapes. Um, move that to the top, select all of these, and then move it right here. Maybe one headline is gonna be primary. Another one is going to be secondary. Let's try that. Let me group this against this. And yeah, I think, yeah, I think this module is finished. Uh, meaning this card right here, I'm gonna group this and just rename this to card. So yeah, this is essentially our starting point. This is just to have something, anything actually. Let me also add a few more lines of quote unquote text right here. I'm gonna sample the color from here. Yeah, rectangle like this. Move that actually outside of the card. So yeah, so it's directly here. Duplicate again, just so that we get two individual lines essentially, right? And one of them is gonna be more transparent. So this is what we get, basically. This is what we get. It's just lines resembling text basically. And 
duplicate this, move that to the top, enter it along this rectangle, move it again to the top and again and to the top once again. And let me just change up the width of these so that it looks natural, right? We get longer headline, shorter headline, and even longer and then even shorter headline, just so that it feels organic. And then we could do like a line by pressing the P tool, clicking once, holding shift, clicking twice. And one of these endings is gonna be a circle arrow. And it's gonna be, of course, the color is gonna be this. And then I'm gonna paste that in here, make sure it originates from the card, right? Like this. And yeah, here we go. So a couple notes before we finish this off. This was essentially just an example of website graphics that you might use on your page. Um, the goal here is to kind of show you how easy it is to prepare something, some kind of a filler image maybe, so that you'll then just have something that you can iterate on essentially, right? So even with using no photos, you can just create your own devices, you can create your own device illustrations from scratch. It's very easy, very quick. And yeah, to finalize this, I'm gonna just reduce the corner rounding of this to zero actually, right? So zero, selecting this, pressing command shift C, copy this as PNG because this is a component, right? And then I'm gonna paste this as a fill onto this rectangle, right? So this is what we get now. We get our features page that says discover our app. Let's actually go and launch the prototype. So this is the homepage. I'm going to click on more about our features and I go to the features page and voila, when we now scroll down to the second purple feature, we get this beautiful image. These graphics that we have created absolutely 100% from scratch. So no photos used, you don't even have to worry about copyright or anything. In the future videos, we are probably going to finish illustrations for all of these so that we have something that we can iterate on, right? If we don't like this in the future, um, if I get some better ideas on how to go about this visual, I think I'm gonna redo this. But for now, let's just go with this and see where this takes us. So thanks for watching. Leave a like if you found this video useful and also check the link in the description where there is a playlist of videos where all these episodes are compiled, all episodes of designing a website in Figma. So go check them out if you wanna learn more about web design in Figma. And thanks for tuning in and I will see you in the next one.